Hello, Lauren here with Lauren Elizabeth Animal Art. And can you believe it? I'm on day 210 of my 365 days of color. I'm more than halfway through. If you missed my past couple tutorials, we're doing a Paint Your Dog Through the Storm series. These are acrylic painting tutorials dedicated to you dog lovers going through a rough season, and I'll literally be painting your dogs. Now the dog winner of this month that we'll be painting today is of Lois the Beagle. Now so sadly, Lois recently passed away, but Heyo, his owner, was able to retrieve these awesome videos for us to really show his joy and love and gentleness. Now if you'd like to nominate your dog for a chance to become the next tutorial in this series, in the comments down below list your dog's name, breed, and something special about your dog. And I'll respond with my email if your dog is chosen. Then I'll request at least three photos and videos of your dog for the tutorial. So you can access this traceable individually in a link down below, or you can access all my old and upcoming traceables, tutorials, class notes, and more by joining any of the tiers in my online animal art masterclass. And below you'll also find a complete list of materials, the acrylic paint colors I'm using, the brushes I'm using, even my most used supplies. Now I always like to connect a verse or a quote to my painting. And today's verse is Proverbs 22, 6, which says, Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Right now, our little Anna Grace is three years old, and if you know anything about three-year-olds, they're really, really sassy, and also extremely smart. Like, they remember everything. But right now, especially because Zachary just started walking, he's our one-year-old, she's really struggling to be around him and to share. So what we're teaching her is that it's okay to be angry, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to cry, it's just not okay to hurt people from those feelings. Not with their hands and not with their words. Now if I let Anna Grace do whatever she wanted, when she wanted, it'd be a madhouse and poor baby Zachary would be pushed around pretty good. I wouldn't really be loving her or thinking of her future if I allowed her to do whatever she wanted to do. And it's so funny because as I'm teaching Anna Grace this and training her, I really feel like the Lord is training me too. So Adam, my husband, just got a new job. He was laid off over five months ago. Now my prayers have been that he would love this job so much that it would be easy to wake up for and also it would pay what he deserved and provide for the family well. Now it turns out the job Adam got wasn't quite what I had in mind because you know I was praying for this perfect job so Adam should get this perfect job right I mean come on it should fit my schedule it should fit the children's schedule Adam should love it so much well the job Adam got is a night shift job so he's working 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. so naturally he's gonna sleep most of the day and then eat and then go to work now God that's not what I prayed for this is definitely not what I had in mind but he's got good insurance, but he's only three minutes from work. He can walk to work, but it's got fantastic pay. And after two years, he'll be a train mechanic. So you see, I'm having to surrender to the very thing that I'm teaching in a grace to learn, which is that I'm not helping her by giving her everything she asks, because I know better. I'm learning through this storm that the Lord is on my side and he is answering my prayers just not in the way that I had planned. All right, so we're gonna jump into our background. You can choose any color background you'd like. I'm gonna use a green, both dark and light green background to complement the warm yellows and reds and oranges we have in Lois. I'm using a size 10 Arteza angle brush for this, and I'm gonna mix up a pile of dark green and a pile of light green. So one pile will be lots of cadmium yellow, a little bit of grass green, and the other pile will be lots of grass green, a little bit of cadmium yellow. So we have our light green and our dark green. Now I like to say that the background is what I call a warm-up. 
we're getting loosey goosey here. We're getting those creative juices flowing, getting real into our paint with that background. So I'm going to give you two options for painting this background. You can either, if you're a fast painter, cover the entire background with the light green and then blend in the areas you want the dark green. And that's what I did. Now, if you work a bit slower, I recommend starting with your light green. And then as you move around from left to right or right to left, you then move to your dark green and then back to your light green and then back to your dark green. You're just blending them around your canvas so that you have a mix of light and dark green patches that are nicely blended with some loose brush strokes as well. Because you can tell in my background, it is not perfectly smooth and blended in every area. Now a little artist tip here, if you have a dog with very long fur, you definitely want to make sure you don't have any white between your background and the dog itself, like the ears or the feet where it meets the background. You almost want that color, that background color, to go over the sketch. So then you don't have to match the background color, which we have two here, so it's even more difficult, but still doable. It's not the end of the world if you have to, but it saves you a lot more time to make sure you have no white specks and have the background done before you layer the long fur over top. But Lois here has very short fur, so it makes it a little bit easier for us to paint around it even after we've painted the fur. I've got some artist tips for you to help you blend. First of all, you can't blend unless the paint is wet. Not tacky, not dry, paint's gotta be wet. Second of all, if you notice, I'm moving my brush more at an angle where it's laying more flat as opposed to perpendicular and vertical on my canvas. And because it doesn't pull off the paint, it actually smooths it out with the side of my brush. Third, if you're really having trouble and this brush is difficult for you to blend, you can get what's called a blender brush and they come in all different sizes. And my last tip is the consistency of your paint also matters. So if you have heavy body paint that's really thick or even old paint, it can make it very hard to push that paint around and to blend it on your canvas. I have found that Master's Touch medium body paint is fantastic for this. It's got the perfect consistency and also mixing fluid, more watery paint, like the white I have on my paint palette, with heavy body paint. And a fifth tip I'll throw in here is making sure that you keep your brush clean and damp. So yes, you might still have paint on it, but it's not got leftover paint on it when you picked up paint earlier that's already dried. So regularly, <laughs> regularly wash out your brush and then dab it on your cloth or paper towel so that it's not sopping wet, but it's still damp. And then you go to pick up more paint and that also helps to blend.
All right, so I've got some pretty sweet jokes here, dog jokes. And the first one is, what do you call a magic dog? A labra cadabra door. Okay, this one's the best one, I think. What do you get when you cross a dog and a calculator? A friend you can count on. All right, so we're gonna let that dry so that we can apply another layer because whenever we work with green, it's so often that this happens where it's we can almost see through it. It just looks very thin. It's just especially yellow, especially green. That's just what happens. And so we'll go over another layer with our green doing the same thing, but we can still work on the inside of the dog's face like the mouth, the nose, and the eyes as long as we're careful not to place our hand in the wet paint and then we can go back to our background and then we can apply the fur. Okay, so let's start by just outlining the eyes, filling in the pupils, filling in the nostrils, outlining the nose, and then working on the mouth with, I'm gonna use my size zero liner brush and just black. I wanna make sure it's clean and damp. So let's start with the eyes. Again, I'm gonna outline the eyes. I'm gonna fill in those pupils but I will also create an outline around the iris. Now there's a very thick outline around the iris of this beagle. So I'm going to Put in a, a pretty decent thick outline right around here. This is the colored part of the eye. 
and then I'll fill in that pupil. It's quite a large pupil that will cover up with a highlight in a little bit. Be very careful that you don't lose this little corner right here because we have a line that doesn't go over that the point, the edge of the eye. Try your best to make these pupils symmetrical and in the same spot, both looking to the right. Okay, so let's move on to the nostrils. I'm gonna fill those nostrils in. I'll also be outlining the nose, even this indent right here. Next, we're going to use our black to move down around the outer edge of the tongue where we have the black gums as well as the smile. So take your time here because we have this part black, this is black, but right on the outside is white and this white will just go over this for here and the bow tie. So we won't wrap the black all around the tongue, just the sides of it. All right, so I'm still going to use my size zero liner brush. And I'm going to start very carefully going around the little points. So it's going to just stop right here. I'm going to very carefully go there just so it I, I know where to stop. And I'm actually going to bring this out a little further than our sketch. It just stops on the corner side of, I guess there's no corner, on the side of the right side of the tongue. And I'm just going to bring it up there. So inside here, I'm going to paint black and up towards the sides of the smile.
Now I'm very carefully going to outline with such a small little line. I'm going to outline this edge of the snout and then the line starts to get much thicker. I'm putting more pressure on my brush to create a thicker line with that black and then I'll actually round out the very corner, very end. See how I did that? I just put a little, almost like a little knob there on the corner of that smile. All right, so I'll paint on the other side of the tongue. All right, so now I'm gonna very carefully work around the edge of that, the left side of the snout with a thin little line. And then we'll go and make a little knob on the end of the left side of the smile. I'm gonna make them even too. You don't wanna have one side thicker than the other. The background is still quite sticky for me. It's not quite dry yet, so we can start working on those eyes. Is the eye, yeah, the eyes are dry, so now let's work on the colored part of the eyes. Now, if you're new to my tutorials, I tried to mix up with a little bit larger brush, and then I apply, for the details, I apply a smaller brush. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna do that with my size one round brush. I'm gonna start mixing up the colors for the eyes. I tend to like to make two different colored eyes, and I'm gonna go with a, a blue left eye. So phthalo blue and white. It's gonna be like a medium blue, not super dark, not super light, right there in between. When I'm painting dog eyes or other animal eyes, I start with around the medium color, and while it's wet, I'll add in the darks, blend that in, and then also the lights. It's in such a small little area, it's kind of hard to layer, so that's why I tend to like to blend. And now I washed up my brush, and we'll mix up the color for the right eye. I think we'll go with an orange, just a tiny bit of permanent red, and a good amount of cadmium yellow. It's a little on the dark side, so I'm gonna add a smidge bit of white. All right, so the best way to determine where to place color and also to help us mix the right colors, we have to determine where that light source is. And in this photo, it's on the right. So we have to make everything on the right side of Lois consistent with that right side light source, making it lighter than the left side. And then right there in the middle, where the light meets the dark, it's kind of like in between medium values. I call them the joiner colors. So I mixed up with my size one round brush. I will apply, this is my 3-0 round brush. Okay, so let's pick up our blue. We're gonna work on that left eye and fill in the iris. We have some beautiful big eyes here. I'm gonna be careful not to paint over the pupil or the outline around the iris or the outer edge, but if you do, we can just touch it up with some black. So if you're new to my tutorials, I often like to make two colored eyes and being that the left side's darker, I chose blue and a brighter color on the right side. So now it's very much a dark eye. We hardly see that eye. I had to lighten up this refer reference photo, but where I do see it, we have a highlight right here. So we'll add that in later, but I'm gonna make, I'm gonna add more of my phthalo blue I'll just pick up straight from the little blue and I'm gonna darken up while that's wet the bottom of it and also the top of it. Still leaving a little bit of that blue on the side here where we're getting a little bit of that light hitting it. Okay. 
Okay, so I washed out my brush. And let's do the same thing with our right eye. Another a tip here, you don't want it sopping wet. Detail brushes, you really have to push on your cloth or paper towel to get the water off because there's just not many bristles to hold the water so it can drip on your eyes or whatever detail you're working on. So make sure you get that water off so it's not dripping. Okay, so next with our orange. Okay, so this is really important here. You want to listen. I'm going to darken up just with a little bit of red into this orange. However, I will also pull in some raw sienna. So the tiniest amount of red and more raw sienna, or else it kind of looks like a bloodshot eyes. The top of the eyes are often getting a shadow in them. So usually we'll make the top of the eyes darker, pretty much always, unless there's like direct light shining into their eyes. And then a little bit in the corner there. The right eye looking a bit almost like it's bloodshot, like I said, is something I noticed at the very end of this painting. So I just went in with that red and raw sienna to tone that down, make it a little bit more brown. And then also what I did to add to the highlights, I added more cadmium yellow to make it more of an orange. I like to do a gray inside these areas around the iris. It's gonna be a dark gray on the left, a light gray on the right. So let's mix up gray with our white and black. I'm gonna start by mixing up a light gray for the right eye, which is a very tiny little area. And then I'll pick that up and pull in some more black to create my dark gray. Okay, so this dark gray, I'm just gonna go ahead and add to the sides of the iris on the left eye. the light gray on the right eye. Okay, so let's touch up the pupils. Let's create a thicker outline even, more than we did. I'm gonna create a little bit thicker outline around the iris. And then we'll even take a little bit of a dark shadow above the eyes where we're getting less light. Okay, so I'm going to start with the iris over top the colors that we just applied. I'm going to create a little bit more of a shadow right above this, this eye. Same with this eye, I'm going to create a little bit thicker line, just a thick black line above it, and thicken up that, that border around the iris. And then I'll stand up and make sure those pupils are symmetrical. Here's an artist tip for whenever you're painting my tutorials. It's very tempting to just always look at what I'm doing and not view at where you can make adjustments on your painting. I really rec recommend you pause the video often and step back from your painting and just look at it. Don't judge it harshly, just say, okay, what does my painting need? And it's good to do that throughout the process. All right, so then I'm gonna take my light gray that we created. I'll add in more white to it just to make it a very light gray. And let's just apply those highlights. So there's quite a few hi highlights on the right eye. I'm counting like what looks like three. So I'm gonna do over top the pupil. If you watch me, one, two, it cuts over the iris, and then three. I got a little artist tip here. You're never gonna have highlights inside where we applied the shadow at the top of the eye. Any shadow, there won't be those bright highlights. So it sits, those highlights sit right below that shadow. All right, and then for the left eye, it just looks like one. Just one in the same spot on the right side of the pupil. Mm -hmm. 
Now it can really help to zoom in to those eyes to see the shape of the eye highlights. They're not always round. Some of them are more pointy or almost square shaped. But if you ever mess up, the highlights that sit over the pupil, you can just touch up with black, which is what I'm doing right here to this eye. Now, if you'd like to learn how to paint your dog or cat in much more depth than this, even as a beginner, I've created something called the Online Animal Art Masterclass. I created this class over three years ago to be this therapeutic, uplifting, healthy outlet for those battling addiction, depression, and anxiety. The very thing that helped me through my own recovery story. But it's all animal art, all pet and wildlife art, an ongoing user-friendly class with my 12-step pet portrait painting process with individual videos demonstrating and explaining each step with a printable guide to follow along. And I have breed-specific tutorials going over the different fur types like long fur, wavy fur, short fur. I even have a pet portrait commission course for creatives who want to start or grow a part-time or full-time income painting pet portraits. And then I have my wildlife paintings. These are animals from around the world and below the sea, which is where I also teach my acrylic painting techniques, tips, and color secrets. So if this would bless you or a friend, I have links to my online animal art masterclass in the description box below. So let's get back to touching up our eyes with our black. And then I'll add a little bit more darkness to the top of this eye. By doing that, all I'm doing is just bringing that dark line down. Then I'm gonna go back to my orange and just make that more round. I just want to make these eyes a little bit more round, so I'm going to go back to my blue as well. Just round that out. Next, we're going to work on that nose. I'm going to use Burnt Umber, black and white, and I'm going to start with a dark value that is not darker than the black outline. I'll mix up with my size one round brush. This is Burnt Umber, black and white for that nose. All right, so this is a pretty dark nose. We want a dark color here, but not so dark that we lose the nostrils and the black outline in the center. It's okay if we have to go back and touch those up, but we want it just slightly lighter than that black value. And so that's where white will come in handy. You can test it out. If it's too dark, just add more white. And then once you have the right color, we'll fill in the entire nose. Okay, I got another one for you. Why wasn't the dog a smooth talker? Because all he ever said was rough, rough.
Okie dokie. So now I'm gonna go on with white. I'm gonna set aside, I'm gonna mix up a pile of a lighter version of this, adding more white. So I, you see how I did that? I pulled in a little bit of the previous color, I added in more white, and this is what we'll use to apply the highlights, which I'll go in with a different brush. I'll go in with a smaller brush. I'll use my size zero liner brush again. Okay, so let's, because the light source is hitting the right, the right side of that nose, and even any parts that's sticking up on the left side of the nose is where we'll apply that highlight. So if you watch me, I see a very strong highlight that is just touching the edge of a nostril, like that, and then it climbs up the side of it. So I'm just blending this in. I see a strong highlight to the right of the top of the nose. The edge on the left side of, by that indent, I see a highlight because it's sticking out. As well as the top of it, we're gonna get a little bit of that highlight. And I'm just, again, gonna blend this in. If it's drying too fast for you, just pull in a little bit more of your darker color and that'll help you blend it too. And I really wanna make that right side uh, pretty light, so I'm gonna go in with more of my highlight. I'm also going back to add a highlight a little bit further inside that right nostril. So it's on that edge of the nostril, but then also kind of climbs in and up. And then once again, on the right side of that nose, really add some contrast by making that lighter. You know where else we see it? Right before. I also see a little bit of it coming right here on that so side of that nostril and below it. That's a little too light, so I'm gonna go back in with my darker version of this color and tone that down so it's not so bright. We should have the brightest parts on the right side of the nose. And if you went over any of your outline or any of the nostrils, because those nostrils need to be symmetrical, go back in with your black. I'm gonna actually pull part of this down, not covering up all of that highlight, but a little bit. get that indent in the center of the nose. Do you know what we can do to make this nose look even more realistic is by making it darker on the left side. So I'm gonna take this color, set it aside, add in more black and burnt umber. I'll even actually add even more black and more burnt umber. And right here, we see it's getting very little light, so we're gonna paint it in below that highlight. I also see in the left side of the nose, it's definitely pretty dark. And we also can't forget, on the left side of the nose, on the lower part below that left nostril, I'm gonna work up in between those highlights with this dark color, okay? So the bottom of the nose will be pretty dark and the far left side. You know where else 
it almost makes this nose more heart-shaped. I'm gonna add a little bit here, right at the top. I'm gonna to kind of like curve it around like that. And for some reason this nose looks a little lopsided, I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more on the left side. All right, we got a cute little tongue sticking out. I'm going to probably paint and mix with my size one round brush. And if you're new to my tutorials, my favorite colors to mix tongues are raw sienna, permanent red, and white. And I think I'll probably mix a few colors here. This is a medium value that I just mixed up. We need a medium, dark, and a light. So let's do that now. To darken it up, we'll just pull it aside, add more of a raw sienna and permanent red. And you know what? I'm even gonna add a little bit of burnt umber as well to darken that up. And then to lighten it up, we'll take more of this lighter color and add white. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that, add some more white. And let's get started painting. So we'll start with our medium value. I barely have much mixed up, so I'm gonna mix up more of the medium value. So that was just white, raw sienna, and permanent red. Okay, so we got our medium, dark, light. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is lay down the shadows and where I see them closer to the inside of the mouth. And then my next step will be blending into that, but also covering up more white with the medium value. And then onto the light pink. Oops, a little too much water left on my brush. Gotta be careful about that. The darkest part is closer to the inside of the mouth. I'll also pull it down along that line in the center of the tongue and wrap it around the, the right side. But if you notice, we have a little bit stronger shadow on the left because of our light source. And because the tongue is kind of going in at that indent, this side is gonna be a little darker too because it just kind of goes like that. All right, so working wet into wet here, I'm gonna, I just washed up my brush dabbed it dry, I'm going to go in with my medium value, and while I blend into that previous dark value, I'll be covering up more white. This is why it's so important that we have wet paint here so that we can both blend into that previous layer and also cover it more white. All right, now I'm gonna wash out my brush again, pat it dry, and then go in with my highlight. And so the first place I see this highlight is strong on the far right. It goes all the way up to the snout. It's not going over, but right up to it. As well as apply a strong highlight right to the left of that indent on the tongue and blend that in to the left as well. Pat it dry, washed up my brush, apply another bit of this lighter value to the far right. And again, all the way down on the left side. And a cool little trick, if you really wanna blend the medium value with the dark value a little bit better. Now this might be a refresher for you or you've never done it before, but this is a damp brush that I'm using just to blend these two wet areas together. I'm not adding any paint in, it's just a damp brush. But 
but I still want to work wet into wet and I'm going to work wet into wet with just burnt umber and my size one, size zero, sorry, size zero liner brush because I want to take this all the way down along the indent with just burnt umber. I'm not going to pull it all the way down to the end, but about there and blend into the darkest value closer to the left side of the mouth. It's almost black there, so just in like a triangular shape, I'll add to the left side of the tongue. And even on the inside, it might be too dark. So what I'll do is I'll pull in more of this medium value just to tone it down. So that's burnt umber and this medium, medium value to create a shadow right there too. If the paint is still wet, you don't necessarily have to mix up the paint on your paint palette. You can just keep adding in more paint and then blending that together on your canvas just like I did. And here I go again reapplying more of the lightest value of my light pink on the right side of the tongue. All right, wonderful job. We have completed the mouth, the nose, and the eyes. Of course, we can do more touch-ups at the end, but what we're gonna do now is make sure our background is completely done before we move on to the bow tie and then the fur. We That's the step that we wanna have done before we move on to any more parts in the beagle. And so we're just gonna repeat the same steps we did at the beginning with our light green mixture of cadmium yellow and some grass green and then another pile of less cadmium yellow and more grass green. Another artist tip here, when you're working with yellow or green or raw sienna and sometimes pink, no matter what brand of paint you're using, it just seems always thin. I often have to add multiple layers to any sort of paintings with green and yellows. It's really helpful to get heavy body paint in these colors, but even so, this can happen. So I'm back with my size 10 angle brush and I'm gonna work dark to light to dark to light, blending as I go from around my canvas. And also, it helps to keep that brush at an angle. Again, it will pull off the paint if it's just perpendicular. You won't actually have to do as much this time because we this will be the second coat. Now, something that I do is in areas that I wanna keep really a light green, I'll literally just pull in some cadmium yellow into that area over top the green that I've laid down, that's the important part. Or if I wanna add it, make it darker, I just pull in straight grass green to that area. Okay, starts to get a little darker. So I'll pull in some of my darker color. Okay, I'm gonna wash out my brush. I would say you don't really have to wash your brush when you're going from light to dark, but you do if you're going dark to light because that dark color overpowers the light one. I'm running out of my lighter color, so I'm gonna mix some more. Got another dog joke for you. Why did the beagle cross the road? To get to the barking lot. Why do beagles hate the rain? They don't want to step in a poodle.
Now I'm going to make this a little bit darker in the upper corner. So I'm just going to take straight grass green, much darker. And with the dark green that we mixed on our paint palette, I'll mix that in. on my brush get a mix up some more colors on my paint palette I should say more of the light green and the dark green that's what I meant to say so I'll need some more yellow Now I like this strong contrast where it's dark, so I'll make this one lighter by just pulling in yellow. Just so it kind of almost looks like it's going up like that. And here I go, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna grab a damp brush. And again, I'm gonna apply that technique with a damp brush. I'll just blend that in the areas that I really want to have more blended. It won't really work if the paint is dry. Like it's kind of dry down here. So I'm gonna to have to pull in some more of the paint. Next, we're going to work on this bow tie. It's another thing. It's what I call connected parts. And I, I say to get the connected parts done before the fur, because for instance, it's so difficult to, if we were to do the fur first and then paint this, this fur that lays over top of it, we would have to touch that up again. So just to be more efficient, let's get this bow tie done. It actually, if you, it has little rubber duckies on it. And, but first we want to paint it with blue uh, apply the medium, dark, and light values, and then go on with the rubber duckies over that. I'm just gonna mix up a medium value blue, and then we'll go on with our darks and lights, just like we did with the, the eyes. So that's phalo blue. I'm using a size two filber brush and white. So to get that medium value, a good amount of white and just a little bit of blue. Not a light blue though, and not a real dark blue right there in the middle. All right, and let's just simply fill in the bow tie. And if you notice, there's a little part of the bow tie. It's like the strap, it's right there. Okay, so we might need a smaller brush for that. In fact, 
I'll move to my size one round brush. I just washed it and I'll use that to start painting. All right, so very simply, I'm gonna fill in this tiny little triangle here, the little strap, and move to my right where we fill in the entire bow tie with this blue. And we're working underneath that white fur around the neck. I wanna make a note though, just like we did with the tongue and the nose and the eyes, we will be working wet into wet with the highlights and lowlights. So make sure that those you apply while this paint right here is wet. out the outer edge of both of the, the bows, this side and this side, I just want to make it a little bit more rounded instead of straight and then come to a point at the end. Okay, so now to apply the dark values, it's quite simple. We're just going to pull in and I'm going to switch to, for this part, I'm going to switch to my size zero li liner brush. I'll just pull in phthalo blue and where this the bows come up we have the line for the little knot. Okay, so let's call the center the knot and the left and right side the wings of the bow tie. And so I outline the left and right sides of the knot and now I'm creating two lines on the inside of both wings and then I'll work up from that because there's a shadow from the fold in the wings and also a shadow from the fur that's covering up the bow tie. The darkest part should be right in here. This should be the darkest part. And also I'm gonna blend in phthalo blue into this area because that's hardly getting any light. Now we didn't mix up a light blue for our light values, but I'm just gonna use white. Just a little bit at the tip of my brush, I'll blend that in on the right side of the right wing, as well as the right side of the knot. I'm just gonna blend that in with a little tiny bit of white on this area, this part of the bow. I'll also apply it to the right of the knot. See how I'm doing that? To the right of the knot. and then we'll get some hitting, the light hitting here too. Now, although there's a shadow created from this ear as well as that fur laying over top, I'm just gonna indicate that there is a fold on that right wing, so I will add a little bit of this blue to lighten that area up. Now because that fur is right here, I'm actually going to take this blue out right over top this bow. I'm going to make this part a little darker and even going over that knot. Just a line of this dark blue because that fur is going to lay over top and create a bit of a shadow. Now I thought about it some more and I want to indicate that that knot is kind of protruding up a little bit. It's sticking out a little bit, which is why I'm going back to our original blue and pulling that up closer to the fur a little bit more than we had. All right, creatives. So we have reached the end of our part one Lois the Beagle tutorial. If it's not already up, it's coming very soon. So you can start working on part two. I just want to note though, if you're jumping right into part two, you need to have this bow tied dry for us to apply the duckies over top. And a link to part two will be down below. All right, bye. Mm -hmm.